What's going on everybody, Gem Mint here, back again with another hardcover review. Finally got caught up with Ice Cream Man by W. Maxwell Prince, Orazo, and O'Halloran. This is the hardcover, the Sunday edition, volume one. So I jumped onto Ice Cream Man after the Haha ha miniseries came out. So I don't know what issue that was, whether it was 15 or 20, but I didn't read the beginning arc. This collects the first 12 issues, so it's the first time I jumped into it, and man, so glad that I did. We're gonna do overhead shots. We're gonna do a review of this book, which is a horror anthology, but it has characters that go throughout each story. And that's the part that I was really interested in, the Ice Cream Man. And there's another character, kind of his rival, which I don't think have been showing up in the most recent issues. So definitely glad that I jumped into this. I picked this hardcover up from organicpricebooks.com. Make sure to check them out for all your collected edition needs and use code GEMMIN to save two bucks every time. I mean, you might as well save $2. So with that being said, let's jump into the overhead shots. All right, guys, so here is the front of the hardcover. You have Rick Ricketus, the ice cream man with this spider. And I love how themes and ideas transcend from one issue to the next, even though, like I said, it's an anthology series. Little ding right here on the bottom, no big deal. I don't really kind of sweat that too much. Uh, here goes the spine, and then here is the back. This character, just one of the characters from the standalone story. So this is, like I said, the oversized hardcover that collects the first 12 issues of this series. It does have some bonus material, and it's got this light, playful type of aesthetic to it, but it's very far from that. Here are the chapters, uh, table of contents. You have some of the credits here, a little intro, and then it jumps into chapter one, and it does give you like the virgin artwork cover to each issue. So right away, we get his name. The Ice Cream Man is Rick, and he's just kind of like this Pennywise character that we learn in one of these later issues what his essence is and what his origin is. This is a story about this kid who's like on his own, come to find out his parents died from the poison of that poisonous spider. So that spider takes place right in the first issue and like I said, continues on throughout the series. So that's kind of the vibe of this short story, introducing like a werewolf um, idea here, uh, which ends up being Ricketus, which ends up being the ice cream man. And uh, that's kind of like, the Pennywise nature of it. He can change into things. He's just this demonic creature. And we see that play out throughout these 12 issues on how his face changes from like a humanoid type of face to more of like this monster, sharp teeth, long tongue type of character. And I didn't mention this in the intro, but this book plays with deep, dark themes. So a child with his parents getting killed. This next one delves heavily into drug addiction, heroin addiction, and how this couple met and fell in love and how they ended up doing drugs to just have fun together, and it turned into them robbing stores and eventually killing people to try to get money for the drugs. And then you see how like the ice cream truck pulls up and plays a role here. She actually steals it. And I'm not gonna go through every page of every story, but just to give you the gist of it. So like these characters are never really introduced again, but the ice cream man is prevalent throughout. Jumping into issue three, like I said, you get the uh, cover art. So this is about this one hit wonder from, I don't know, it looks like the 50s or 60s or so and how he couldn't get another hit. And he's like this depressed guy, gets a little visit from the ice cream man. And what we learn throughout is the ice cream man, he's kind of like a godlike entity, a god man is what he's referred to as one of two cousins, which one is good and one is bad. So he just likes to kind of go around this world, this universe, this earth, which we kind of learn there are many, that um, he just messes with people, man. He <laughs> gives this guy this guitar so he can make a, try to make another hit. The ice cream man kind of tormenting him and just being nasty with it. <laughs> they had a lot of musical themes here, like the Yellow Submarine. It was like a nod to the Beatles. And uh, that was like a music musical-themed issue. I love this kind of insane, gleeful Ice Cream Man cover. All right, so this one is crazy too, man. This one is about this guy whose friend recently died and he's got to see, say the eulogy at his funeral and his deadbeat dad shows up uh, and kind of tries to, I don't know, make things right with his son that he didn't have a relationship with. And what's interesting is like he ran out on his family and our main character who we saw his wife is pregnant He's contemplating doing the same thing. So it's really deep, man, how the father like 
tries to tell him, you know, that ain't it, man. You need to stay with your family. And this is when we get introduced to Caleb. Now, we don't know it yet, but Caleb is like the antithesis of the ice cream man or vice versa. And he looks like he would be the bad guy, right? He's all dressed in black, cowboy look, ice cream man all dressed in white. But Caleb basically shows up to say, hey, I see what you're doing in this town, man, and I don't like it. Dealing with heavy themes, this whole issue is a suicide. This guy jumping off of this tall building, him kind of explaining that he had, you know, a wife with two mistresses and looking at all the evil and kind of corruption that's going down in the floors as he's passing by. It's crazy, man. W. Maxwell Prince, he touches on some serious themes throughout this book, man. Moving on to issue six here. This one is a really dope story. So he chooses uh, a Neapolitan. Is that what it's called when you have the uh, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry ice cream? So the ice cream man serves him up. And for the majority of this issue, we're seeing how his life would have played out in three different directions. Had he gone left, straight, or to the right? And what would happen? Going to the left, he would have found this girl. Going straight would have found this puppy. Going to the right, he would have realized this ice cream had dead bugs or maggots in it. And just following these three different paths that he could have took. Now, what's sad is they all kind of end up being pretty terrible, right? Like, he does have a family with the girl, but something happens to the baby. He does get with this dog, but it ends up being like, you know, a lost dog that he wants to return or what have you. And it plays out over a different amount of time as well. Like, the first um, section is years and then it's days. And then I feel like, oh, yeah, here it is. Months, years, days that's gone by. Love the storytelling, really switching it up from other issues. I followed along uh, page by page. And then here is like, you know, still the three different outcomes. I guess the dog one was the best one, <laughs> as it should be, right? Moving on to chapter seven. This deals with a, a young kid who lost one of her best friends or her best friend to cancer and how she has her as an imaginary friend. And the themes just are deep and dark, man. The parents are kind of sick of it, try to, you know, bring her to therapy she runs away the parents realized what a mistake they've made and then here, here's what I'm talking about with ice cream man how his face will change from like that regular humanoid look to uh, something monstrous Caleb comes back does save the little girl confronts R Rickitus I think his name is and they just call him Rick for short but I really like the issue that delves into their origins let's see this one is a crazy issue following these uh EMTs in this ambulance ride everything in the world is all messed up they're stealing prescription drugs from the hospital and popping them and playing with the themes that are introduced earlier like there's bugs in our skin and it's speaking to us and these voices are telling us to do evil things and it's funny that that gets introduced in the beginning of this uh, run and it comes back to play here with these EMTs and it even just flashes to this little scene here of this couple that are just introduced that she's accusing her of being unfaithful. So she's burning the house down, burning her lover's house down. The art gets crazy. This is kind of talking about turning us inside out, the bugs in our skin and, or in our blood. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. I love how they introduce the ice cream man first in this issue. And then he gets a little bit more gnarly looking. And then over here, it continues giving me reptile Mortal Kombat vibes. <laughs> and what's interesting here is the person they were riding in the ambulance with the whole time was Caleb with a knife in his neck. They were supposed to try to save him. So this is where we get the real backstory on who the ice cream man is or could potentially be and who Caleb is. And longer ago than there are numbers to express. So this is like either in the, you know, the deep past of Earth or some other earth type of planet where Caleb is hunting down this spider ends up being a huge spider which like I said the themes carry over and he looks a little bit more elf like so does uh, I feel like ice cream man we learn that they are co uh, cousins and that they have this shared uncle magic users they call themselves the god men so you kind of get this vibe that it's the embodiment of life or light I should say it's the embodiment of light and dark and they just kind of do what they will right especially ice cream man yeah see he looks a little different on this planet and this almost seems like this is uh i don't want to say their home planet but somewhere where they were before they were here on earth being like the kind of yin and uh yin and yang if you will so it ends uh, on a, a four-part kind of continuous story this one though takes place 
Funny enough, in Juarez and in El Paso, where we just left from, in the first couple of pages are in Spanish only about this girl who's kind of being forced to marry this general who looks very eerily like the ice cream man. And then her like American cowboy type of lover who wants to whisk her away. Now, in the bonus material, we do get the English translation, which I read after I read this. So I was like, okay, that was cool that they incorporated that. But, you know, just kind of a story of, you know, this um, this guy trying to whisk away this woman, but her Tia rats her out to the ice cream man and, you know, he does what the ice cream man does. So it's funny, that's part two, but, you know, thinking about it, it doesn't really have much to do with part one, just like part three doesn't. This is basically this guy that's stuck in reality TV, kind of a metaphor for life, right? Us kind of just being stuck on the couch watching these stupid shows and how he's stuck in there and going from one show to the next and trying to escape um, something terrible happening to him. But this is Ice Cream Man, so you can imagine that it does. Wealthy family of zombies is like a Kardashian ripoff for sure. And then it has a kind of kind of cool like black mirror type of vibe to it. The last one, the space story is pretty dope. So Earth has been destroyed. We have this arc. Uh, there seems like there are a few of them out in space trying to uh, inhabit other planets, going through this asteroid belt that has xenomorph looking spiders. But again, with the spider theme, you know, one of those spiders has to get on board, right? <laughs> Ends up having to crash plan uh, crash on this uh, moon type of planet. Ends up seeing a picture of his family. Ends up getting ran up on by an astronaut, which we assume is the Ice Cream Man. Kind of trying to play with the fact that it might be due to these flowers, which look pretty from far. But once you look up close, kind of like the ice cream, it's ugly. Uh, and then running into the, the Ice Cream Man here. Very demonic looking version of him. But great story. Of course, the astronaut in black was Caleb. On to the next one was kind of what their uncle was telling them. On to the next plane of existence or planet or universe or whatever. Leaving me wanting this volume two to come out. So real quick, the bonus features. You have incredible variant covers here. Love the artwork for Ice Cream Man. I always kind of used to say that the interiors gave me like a Mike Judge kind of vibe. Like just kind of did the job. But some of these variants are really dope. I like how this one's censored showing the ankle. <laughs> with the comics code authority on the back of the truck. This gives me like haha -ha vibes, which I believe was like a mini series that was just dedicated to like clowns and stuff. Sinister looking ice cream man right here. Bugs in the ice cream, like I mentioned. Then we have some designs on some character treatments. We have uh, some scripts, which I, I tend to look at these more and more because it's it's so impressive how the writer plots out the panels as well man you would think that would be up to the artist and i know it kind of depends on the creative team but interesting how the writer also sees the comic laid out right uh here is the script for chapter 10 a border story funny so yeah this is uh all the spanish translated back into english with the sketch cover for that issue and then here's kind of like i guess w maxwell prince's little sketchbook that he uses to write and plot out issues Early issue one cover colors, huh? I'll give credit to the uh, person who made these designs for the back of each issue. That was cool. All right, so that is it, man. Cannot wait for volume two. This video is brought to you by Ninja Funk. Issue one comes out on November 2nd. They hit over 105,000 pre-orders. Be on the lookout for issue two that drops on December 14th with this beautiful David Nakayama cover. Shout out to Ninja Funk and Whatnot Publishing. And there we have it, man. What did I tell you? W. Maxwell Prince, he plays with the darkest of themes, man. Whether it's drug abuse, whether it's suicide, just the most twisted and demented things. It makes them a bright, colorful comic book featuring the Ice Cream Man, this kind of Pennywise type of character. Really dug this series. Looking forward to the next hardcover to kind of bridge that gap. I definitely didn't read 13 and 14. I might have jumped on with issue 15, but... Definitely dug this book. Let me know what you think about Ice Cream Man in the comments down below and stay minty fresh. Peace.